Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Heart Church and our Eucharistic celebration. We extend a very special warm welcome to our visitors and our parishioners. We're glad to see you as always. Today we celebrate the Mass of the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our second collection today will be for the support of Catholic high schools here in the Archdiocese of Hartford. There's a special basket at the entrance of the church for your donation. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the people of the parish. Let us begin by praying the morning offering found on the inside cover of the hymnal. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your sacred heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation of sin, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for peace and justice in the world, the well-being of my loved ones, and the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Please stand as we greet our celebrant, Father Michael, and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 942, Holy, Holy, Holy. acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the anointed one. Christ have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you proclaim liberty to captives and free the oppressed. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus 
Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. <clears throat> Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand, standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate. He read out of the book from daybreak till midday, in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people, and as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the Lord are right. Re- 
rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body in one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety. Whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now, you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work mighty deeds, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? The word of the Lord. 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who are eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. You know what it feels like to become defensive. You're talking to someone, you might ask a question, and they tell you something about yourself that you know is true, but you don't like to hear it. And then you're faced with a few different responses. You can attack that person who told you the true thing and tell them everything that's wrong with them. You can try to justify or make excuses for what has been pointed out to you. You can become sad or despondent about the news. Or you can listen, accept it, be changed by it. I hate being defensive, yet I find myself defensive quite a lot. It's my default response to any criticism. And of the ways I just listed, the way in which I tend to respond is to make excuses 
or try to justify myself. That's my initial response. But everyone responds differently. How do you respond to a hard truth? What happens to you when you hear something that you know is true but challenges you? Everyone is different. In the first reading from, the, from Nehemiah, Ezra the priest reads to the people of Judah the law of Moses. And this is a unique moment in the history of the Jewish people. And so I want to give you the, the background for this moment, for this first reading that we hear. This was a relatively small group of Jews who came back to Jerusalem after several generations of being exiled in Babylon. It was a group of Jews who cared deeply about their religion and their covenant with God. Yet, they had lost everything. The prior generation or two had fallen away in the practice of the faith. They had not heeded the words of the prophets. And the Babylonian Empire captured Jerusalem, destroyed the temple and the entire city of Jerusalem and took the majority of the Jews away as exiles to move them away from their homeland to somewhere else so that they would not have a sense of identity or a desire for rebellion. So they are, we're a displaced people. And for around 80 years this took place, where the Jewish people had no priests, had no prophets, and had no way to practice their faith except in fragmentary ways. They had no temple. And then the Babylonian Empire was captured by the Persian Empire, conquered by the Persian Empire, and the Emperor Cyrus let the Jews go home, had no desire to have exiles within his empire. And he let a group of them go home to Jerusalem to rebuild the city and to rebuild the temple. And so what is happening in this first reading is a description of the people who came home to rebuild the temple and to rebuild their lives and their cities, to rebuild their worship with God. And it's important to note that, there, that the majority of the Jews did not come home from Babylon, did not come home from the Persian Empire, but rather assimilated themselves into their new place. They became Persians. They didn't go back to Jerusalem. They didn't go back to the Promised Land. They stayed where they were. So what we're hearing described is the group who did go home. When Ezra the priest read the law in its fullness, now that the temple was rebuilt, the people responded by weeping. Why? It's because they recognized the gap between what their lives had been in Babylon, what they had learned and what they had tried to do in their fragmentary ways and then hearing in the fullness how they were called to live. And they recognized the gap between the two. They also were weeping at the loss of their heritage and their way of life. Because we have a people who are coming back and asking themselves, how do you restore an identity? How do, re how do you renew a way of life? Were they Persians or were they Jews? How do you create or reappropriate your identity that you were given? And so hearing the law gave them an objective measure to see and to understand who they are. And it was a challenge to them. So Ezra tells them, do not weep. Eat rich foods. Because today is holy to the Lord. Do not be saddened. In other words, what has been lost to you is now being restored. Your response is not to condemn yourself for what was lost, but to rejoice because the Lord is giving back to you what you had been missing, what had been lost you have now gained. This parallels what is happening in the gospel. Jesus comes in the history of the Jews at a unique moment in time as well. That the Holy Land was under the occupation of the Romans, but they had already lost their independence after Alexander the Great had conquered the known world. 
They had a king, Herod, who was corrupt. The priests and the religious leaders in Jerusalem were tied up in the politics of the empire. There were many religious movements for reform, including the Pharisees, who were representing a type of reform movement of trying to make the individual holy by following all the details of the law to its furthest extent, because they judged the people in Jerusalem to not be following the law. So it's like, well, let's be take it very seriously ourselves. And there are other sorts of religious movements and groups going on as well. There's a sense of revolution and rebellion in the air at all times, the sense that maybe we'll come together and overthrow the Romans. We had John the Baptist, who was out in the wilderness, who was preaching repentance in the middle of nowhere, and great masses of people would go out and listen to him. There's a sense that there was something missing, and a great desire for change. What was going on could not stay the way that it was. And so now we have Jesus in his hometown in Nazareth going to the synagogue on the Sabbath, given the place of honor to read from the scriptures. And he reads this proclamation saying that today is a year of jubilee from the prophet Isaiah. And he sits down, everyone stares at him, and he simply says, today these words have been fulfilled. It's a thrilling moment. Or is it? The reading this weekend cuts us off from the response that the people have to these words. Rather, it puts it to the gospel next weekend. But I'll give you a spoiler from this cliffhanger. The people did not rejoice when they heard these words and were not thrilled by them. Rather, they reject Jesus, they pull him out of the synagogue, and they bring him to a cliff to throw him down headlong so that they could kill him. Their response to this good news was anger and violence and rejection. Another way of responding to what is true in an unpleasant way. So in the readings this morning, we hear two responses to a true statement. In Nehemiah, we hear of sadness because they see the gap from where they are and where they wish to be. And in the case of Jesus, we see outright rejection because what they heard would also require them to be changed. We hear in both cases that the response could be, should be, joy and freedom if they were to accept the truth and be changed by it. We also live in an interesting moment in time. It's neither the time of Jesus nor the return of the Jews from exile. But there's moments in both of the things that we hear this morning that also are taking place in our time as well. We can recognize the Catholic culture and practice of the faith had become fragmented, oftentimes practiced in pieces. Are we Christians? Or do we identify first in according to our political interests or the aspects of our culture that we find to be appealing? What becomes our first identity? Kind of like how the Jews were asking themselves, are we now Persians because we've lived in um, the Babylonian Empire for the last 80 years? Or are we Jews who have come back home? What is our first identity? Do we want a moral law that challenges us? Or do we want to define what is right and wrong ourselves? Are we looking for a savior who is greater than us? Or do we want to be like the Jews in, uh, or the people in Nazareth who say, we're fine just the way we are. We do not want to hear that you are the Messiah. Should we weep? Or should we lash out in anger? How to respond to the good news of Jesus Christ being present with us today? Hear once again the words from Ezra as we come to worship at the altar this morning and bring ourselves before God. Because they are true right now as they were true then. Today, this morning, is holy to the Lord your God. 
Do not be sad, do not weep, for rejoicing the Lord must be your strength. Our Lord God is present here, speaking to you words of truth. Listen to them, embrace them, and be changed by them. profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray that the glad tidings of God's love and care for those in need be brought to fulfillment. That the Church, celebrating her Catholic schools this week, may continue to reflect God's love, God's loving light throughout all who minister and teach in her Catholic schools. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, all the priests, deacons, and religious, may continue to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit as they guide and lead the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders work to ensure that all people can worship God in peace and freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That there be liberty for captives, sight for the blind, freedom for the oppressed, and glad tidings for the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all gathered here might, in gratitude and joy, use our gifts to build up the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country and their families, those who have died, all who are in mourning, and those who suffer in any type of pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we pray for this weekend, especially the people of this parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book and those in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, you sent your Son in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring us the glad tidings of salvation. Hear our prayer that we may come to the fullness of life Jesus proclaimed. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice unto your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. He lifts them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. celebrate 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the song of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. in 
us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Under the announcements this morning, it says there are no announcements, so please remember to take a bulletin on the way out of Mass and to review all the information that's inside of it. The Lord be with you. And be with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Our angel. Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou praise to the heavenly host by the power of God. Cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. As we go forth in peace, let us join together in singing hymn 789, Lord, you give the great commission. Draw. 